Hello, and welcome to the Shipwreck Archive. Thank you. We're looking for The Evening Star Fades. Here we are. Enjoy! The Watchmen of the Avonster had done their part on the night of July 2nd, 1659. They had run to the first mate, Bartel Schach, when the Dutch East India Company yacht had slipped her anchor chain and began to drift towards the shore. He had refused to come on deck, however, and returned to his bunk. It was possible that they had waited too long to then try to wake the captain, Arendt Daniels Lem. Not that trying did them any good, since it took him fifteen minutes to make his way to the deck. It was a clear night, nothing to obstruct their view of the oncoming coast. Now they watched as the ship got closer and closer to the beach, and waited for the captain to arrive on deck and give the orders that were required to save her. The light breeze and gentle tide did their part, pulling the ship along to her final destination. In an organization with as strict a hierarchy as the Dutch East India Company, also known as the VOC, no one was willing to act without proper authority, even if it meant that they were about to lose the ship. The Avonster had not started her life under that name. Indeed, she had not even been a Dutch ship. Built in England, she first appeared in records when the English East India Company bought her in 1641 and changed her name to The Blessing. Though it is uncertain how old she was at the time of her wrecking, that the English East India Company changed her name tells us that she had already been sailing before 1641. By 1645, the East India Company was already debating whether she was worth repairing, suggesting that she was already considered advanced enough in age to possibly not merit the repairs. The VOC certainly did not think highly of her, calling her an old yacht in their own documents. That was not to say that they had not been more than happy to take her off of the English East India Company's hands during the First Anglo-Dutch War in 1653. The VOC was eager to capture as many of their competitors' ships as possible, even a ship like the Blessing that had seen better days. Competition between the two companies, which operated in the same geographic areas, had been fierce, and with war now declared, the VOC was ready to use this to their full advantage. The Blessing's crew did their best to defend their ship, but they were no match for the fully armed and prepared ships of the VOC. The crew would pay for their defiance. While the crews of more compliant ships were freed and their officers were allowed to bring with them their personal effects, the crew of the Blessing found themselves held prisoner on a ship in the Persian Gulf. Due to the poor guard, however, many of them found ways to escape. The Blessing, meanwhile, was refitted by the VOC for use in their own trade. Even an aging trade ship was still a ship. She was also given a name better suited for a ship of the VOC. She appeared on the oceans again under the name Avonster, or Evening Star. The Dutch East India Company also known to name their ships as they thought of the ship, and it is possible that the name Evening Star signified just how old and fading they thought the former blessing was. By 1657, the 250-ton ship was leaking so badly that she could no longer make a return trip to Europe. She was now relegated to the regional trade of the waters of Asia. Over and over, mention was made that the people were disappointed in her ability to sail, her condition, and they even questioned whether or not she should continue to be in use. Still, she was considered good enough for local trade. This was what had brought her to the port of Gale, a major base of operations for the VOC. She was expected now to sail for India, but she would never even leave the harbor. The combination of the first mate refusing to come on deck, the watch being slow to call the captain, and then the captain being too slow to come to face the trouble that his ship was now facing, proved to be deadly to the aging ship. The stern of the ship ran ashore, and as the waves hit her, her stern post broke off, leaving her with a hole that allowed the slit from the anchor, as well as the water, to enter the stricken ship. The VOC had not become one of the most successful companies in the world by allowing even a decrepit ship wreck due to incompetence and allowing it to slide. 
The legal ramifications were slow moving, since all information had to go back and forth on sailing ships across a large distance, but by the summer of 1659, the captain and the first mate of the Avonster, as well as the officers who had been in charge of the watch that night, found themselves under arrest. The negligent captain and first officer were immediately dismissed from their positions, and ordered to pay back the value of the ship to the company not a small amount for two private individuals. The officers who had been in charge of the watch that night met with harsher sentencing. They were ordered to spend time in the stocks and then condemned to six years of hard labor. At least the common sailors were deemed innocent in the whole affair, and they were soon placed with different ships. None of the blame for the incident could be placed with them, and there was plenty of blame to go around. The extent of the damage to the Avonster due to the initial wreck is up to some question. The governor of the port of Galli reported that it had broken up immediately, but some archaeologists have suggested that this was not the case, and that while her sternpost had broken off, the overreporting of her damage might have been a case of the governor wanting to excuse a lackluster salvage operation. The nuts that had been the cargo of the Avonster were sold at a loss to the locals of Galais, so long as the locals were Dutch. Since the VOC had a monopoly, they were not willing to give up even in such a situation as a shipwreck. Dutch control over markets gave them the greatest power, and there were to be no exceptions. That was not to say that the VOC was going to forget the loss, however, and through the next year, they were still questioning whether or not the cargo had been properly disposed of and whether or not they had received what they were expecting from it. The wreck of the Avonster was soon covered with silt from the mouth of the river she had grounded near. She was buried quickly and sank in the soft sediments, which served to preserve her well for 350 years. Water is ever-changing, though, and eventually the Avonster began to make her way to the surface again. This was met with a mixture of celebration and concern. The Avonster has proved a valuable asset in understanding life on a VOC ship of her time and the trade that was undertaken, as well as the history of Galay Harbor. However, the more of the ship that becomes exposed, the more that she is likely to start to decay. The Avonster has become a center of marine archaeological activity as archaeologists from around the world do their best to preserve and document this site while learning as much as possible from it. The evening star might have sank for a time, but she has gained fame with her sinking that far outpaces her status as an old yacht in the VOC. If you would like to learn more information on the Avonster, please see the excavation report of the VOC ship Avonster 1659 as found in the Center for International Heritage Activities from their special publications number one in 2007. Thank you for listening. Thank you for visiting the Shipwreck Archives. See you soon.